everyone, it's Alice and today we are gonna do a cozy mystery TBR. So I love a good cozy mystery and we're nearing the time of year where they're extra cozy to read. I know you can read whatever you want at any time during the year and I read all kinds of different books all year round but there is something extra special about like cozying up with these kinds of books when it's getting colder outside which will hopefully <laughs> be soon. I have a bunch of these on my shelves waiting for me though and I thought we could just take a look at them, chat about them a little bit and get excited. Now I've excluded books that are in series that I'm already reading so all of these will be new to me which is very exciting. The first one is one I got quite recently, it's Chapter and Curse by Elizabeth Penny and just looking at this cover makes me happy. I love this kind of like traditional type cover and it just oozes coziness. The story is set in Cambridge, which is a fantastic setting, and we follow a librarian and her mother, and they're sort of in a need for a change in their lives, and they get a letter from a family member in England who is asking them to come over and take over the family bookshop, which is what an opportunity. They go and they take over one of the oldest bookshops in Cambridge and unfortunately the store isn't doing super well so they want to like spruce it up and try to make things work and I think what happens is that there's a literary festival in Cambridge and they decide to take part and they have like a poetry reading or something and unfortunately during that someone is murdered with knitting needles. This just sounds like the coziest of coziest books and I really hope that the inside matches the outside. It just sounds super lovely and I feel like a murder with knitting needles is just it's gonna have to be fun. Secondly I have got A Spoonful of Murder by J.M. Hall and the main reason that I picked up this book is that it follows three elderly main characters and I love books and especially cozy mystery books where we're following elderly characters and I just can't get enough of them. So I got this mostly because of that and because it's a cozy mystery. We follow three retired school teachers in here who meet up every Thursday to catch up. I think they meet in a, like a cafe, have tea, some cake, sounds lovely. And then one Thursday they run into an old colleague and by the next week that colleague turns up dead. and. It seems like these women feel like there's something suspicious about the death and there's more to it than meets the eye so they set off to try and prove it, which sounds delightful. Then I've got these two books which both sound kind of similar but they both sound great. The first one is Arsenic and Adobo by Mia Manansala and in here we follow a woman who has just broken up with her boyfriend and she moves back home and she is tasked with saving the family restaurant. So she tries to do that and while she's trying to do that she has all of these aunties who are trying to play matchmaker and it sounds like a lot. <laughs> then because this is a mystery of course there is a murder. I think what happens is that a food critic comes to the restaurant and dies like during him trying the food or something and he's notoriously horrible and he's also the main character's ex-boyfriend. So when the police come, they immediately suspect her, but she didn't have anything to do with it. So she has to try and prove that. I also recently found out that this dog on the cover is not just there because it's cute. It's there because the main character actually has one of these sausage dogs, which is the cutest thing and it makes me even more excited. I kind of feel like it's a sign from the universe telling me to finally get one of these dogs because I really want one but probably not and it's also besides the point but I'm very excited to read about the dog as well as the murderer. <laughs> this next one, Death by Dumpling by Vivian Chen, sounds quite similar in a lot of ways but also very good. It follows again a main character who has just had a horrible breakup, she moves back home, she works in the family restaurant and her mother wants to find her a husband. <laughs> I think the murder in here is like the property manager or something that comes either comes to eat at the restaurant or gets like takeaway delivered and after having the food he dies. I think again it's the kind of thing where the police suspect the people in the restaurant obviously and our main character has to prove that they didn't do it or find like the person who actually did it. I really hope that I'm gonna like this book because I am obsessed <laughs> with 
the titles of the books in this series. I think there are quite a lot of books out and I just love both the covers and the titles. I think my favorites are Fatal Fried Rice and Misfortune Cookie. It's so cheesy but it's so good. I have really high hopes for these books actually because I love when cozy books include stuff about food. I just think it makes it extra cozy so hopefully both of these will be a lot of fun and there will be a lot of food in them. Next we have got this beautiful book. This is The Bangalore Detectives Club by Harini Nagendra and one of the reasons that I'm super excited about this book is that it sounds quite similar to one of my favorite cozy mystery series that I'm also reading, the Purveen Mystery series by Sujata Massey. I love that series, I'm obsessed with it and I can't get enough so I'm hoping that this will be kind of similar and sort of scratch the same kind of itch. It's set in the 1920s, which I love, it's set in Bangalore, and we follow a main character who is married to a doctor and she is sort of set on having a quiet life. And they go to this party one evening and she's out in the garden sort of getting some time away from everyone, she just wants some peace and quiet, and when she's in the garden she sees this mysterious uninvited guest running in the shadows and then half an hour later the party turns into a murder scene. I think the way she gets involved with it is that she doesn't think that they got the right person for it so she launches her own investigation and this brings her around Bangalore and to all kinds of different people and places and she finds like all kinds of dark secrets which sounds fabulous and the setting sounds amazing. Then we have got a book that I have been told to read maybe about a million times. <laughs> it's The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley and I know why so many of you have recommended this to me because it does sound amazing. It's set in the 1950s and we follow this 11 year old girl who has a talent for chemistry and poisons, which that's my girl. We meet our main character as she is plotting revenge against her sisters, which makes me chuckle, and I think they live in this like crumbling mansion and she starts noticing all of these weird things happening like she finds a bird with a postage stamp attached to its beak or something and then she also finds a dying man out in the garden and I think he ends up passing away and the police come and they launch an investigation but our main character wants to do some investigating of her own which I fully support and it just sounds like a lot of fun. Next we have got a book that came out in the 60s so it's kind of like a classic by now I guess but I'd never heard of this before one of you recommended it to me. It's The Unexpected Mrs. Polyfax by Dorothy Gilman and this just sounds like a trip. We follow this woman in here who has grown children, they have moved out and she's just getting a little bit tired of her everyday life. She finds it a little bit boring and she wants to do something good for her country so she decides that she's gonna become a CIA agent because of course. I think we follow her when she is on an assignment in Mexico City and this is supposed to be like super easy peasy but then of course something goes wrong and it says something about how she finds herself in a hot cold war and I just think this sounds like so much fun. I feel like this main character is gonna be really feisty and I'm just gonna love her. Second to last we have A Duty to the Dead by Charles Todd and I think this is set right after the First World War. We follow this independent minded woman who is like from the upper middle class but she's gotten quite a different like she comes from a different background than a lot of other people around her. She grew up in India, she had an officer father and she was really taught the value of honor and responsibility and duty. She's a nurse during the war and I think the case relates to something that happens with that. I think she comes across a soldier who is dying and he asks her to deliver a message to his family and I don't think she gets to do it until like after the war. I think the mystery has something to do with that. I don't really know anything more than that but it sounds very interesting. I really like books set in this time period like in between the two wars and the main character sounds very interesting. Now that I'm mentioning this book though I'm suddenly wondering if this is actually a cozy mystery or just like a historical mystery. I feel like 
found this on a cozy mystery like site or someone described it that way but I don't really know. In my mind this is at least cozy mystery adjacent. Lastly we have one that I also just feel like is a cozy <laughs> mystery. I don't actually know but it sounds like kind of cozy so I'm just gonna mention it anyway. It's A Morbid Taste for Bones by Ellis Peters and this follows a monk in medieval times who like solves crimes I guess and I haven't read a lot of books set in medieval times so it just sounds like fun. Our monk is living in an abbey in western England and he spends most of his time tending to the garden but he is sent to retrieve these saintly bones or something and he goes to this little village in Wales and the town's people are a little bit split on whether or not he should be able to take these bones and that like causes some drama and then I think someone ends up murdered and I guess he sticks around to try to find out what happened and also I'm guessing he wants to bring these bones wherever they need to go. <laughs> I just think this sounds really interesting. I think a crime solving monk sounds like a good time. I also think this came out in like the 70s or something. I had never heard of this book but apparently it's been quite popular and it's been like adapted into several kinds of things but I don't know. It just never crossed my path but now it's here and I'm excited to read it. <laughs> that was my whole stack though. I'm sure I've forgotten a couple that are on my shelves but oh well. Either way I have a lot of reading to do. <laughs> I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and what you thought and I would love to hear about your favorite cozy mysteries and if you have any recommendations. As always thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.